Well, it is done. I love me, baby, bust it open, bring it back. I'm the realest killer in it, I don't even need to act. Throwing up the racks, I'm just throwing up the racks, bitch. Ah, yes, friends, what's going on? How you doing? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I do hope you're doing well. I really do hope that. It looks like Gallagher is off to Atletico Madrid. He said yes. So say if Fabrizio Romano. We're going to reflect on that. A little bit on Kepa and Mark Yu, of course, who's done an interview speaking about his time at Chelsea and what he expects and how he, just, he wants to stay in the Premier League and not go on loan. Who can blame him? So thank you for hanging out with me today. We're going to get in. We're going to get into all of it. I'll give you my thoughts, my unfiltered thoughts on the stories. So, yeah, thank you for joining. Thank you for liking, subscribing, supporting. I feel the love. Uh, take a moment. Check this out. Protect yourself. I'm protecting with my full capabilities. Yo, people, a big thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. My long-term partner, Surfshark, is the best virtual private network provider there is on planet Earth. A VPN is a necessary tool, in my opinion, in the modern landscape of internet browsing. Fortunately, Surfshark is sleek and easy to use, so you can achieve that with a multitude of different locations to access. Locations, because this is how VPNs work. They work by moving your computer's IP address, its location elsewhere. Now this has a multitude of benefits. Firstly, it can protect you in terms of identity fraud or viruses or any other digital piracy nastiness. Surfshark will keep you safe and keep your personal details and your browsing private. It will also unlock previously locked entertainment. If your region does not have access to a particular video you want to watch, simply hop onto Surfshark, couple of clicks of a button, go over to that country you need to go to, and there you go, you have access to the content you wanted to watch. It's not just individual videos on different websites as well, it's also massive streaming platforms like Netflix. Because I do this all the time on Netflix, I always like to say it in videos, you can use Surfshark to move to different countries to access different libraries. Like I moved from the UK over to the US, loads of new films, loads of new TV shows now accessible to me. Fortunately, because you're a viewer of my channel, you can enjoy four months free. That's right, four months free when you use my code football on Surfshark. So go use my code football or alternatively click the link in the top of the description to go utilize this fantastic deal and finally get a VPN or alternatively upgrade to this VPN. Go check it out. Mm -mm, go check out Surfshark if you're yet to get yourself a VPN. Link in top of description. Transition yen? There we go. All right, mate. So yes, lots to get into today. We're going to speak about this Conor Gallagher story confirmed by transfer guru Fabrizio Romano. Um, yeah, threatening to get ugly, the whole Conor Gallagher situation. People suggesting that he would have been forced to essentially play Premier League 2. That he had two options, sign the 2 plus 1 deal, go to Atletico Madrid. There's no third option. The third option is pain, sadness, and headlines, no doubt. <clears throat> it looks like he's agreed to Atletico Madrid. We'll get into that in a minute. Before, though, I want to speak about um, Mark Gu. Uh, Nizar Kinsellas wrote something on BBC about it. He did an interview. Of course, he's been very impressive in preseason. But just want to start off with this Ben Jacobs tweet uh, on Kepa Arita Balaga. Yes, indeed. Kepa is still a Chelsea player. 12 months left on his deal, I believe. I think he's training with like the development team or quietly away in Cobham. I think Lukaku's doing that now as well. I didn't think Lukaku would come back, but apparently he has. But Carlo Ancelotti has spoken on Kepa, of course, the uh, Real Madrid uh, manager. He spoke to Ben Jacobs, um, Nizar Kinsella, Jack Rossa, and Kieran Gill. He says this on Kepa, quote, We love him. We love him. But in that position, we're covered. Kepa did really well last season. We were really happy to have him. But I don't know what's going to happen this season. I think he just got friend zoned. <laughs> My God, I just it. Nah, you, had, you know, you know, <laughs> I love you. And I like spending time with you. It was very much like. Obviously, he did contribute to a La Liga winning, Champions League winning season, but the first half, the business end of everything, Lunin came in, and even Lunin was benched by Courtois in the Champions League final. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, I don't think they're going to take Kepa back. What are we going to really do with Kepa? I do think there's still a chance we will terminate his contract. 
uh, and do a Malanga starting, genuinely, and then you can go and sign somewhere on a free transfer and get a bit of a sign-on fee and a bit more wages, uh, so there's no transfer fee. You can sort of find a place for him, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, but Kepa remains a problem. Well... Someone who doesn't remain a problem is young Spanish centre forward Mark Gu. <clears throat> Excuse me, clear my throat there. Naz Kinsella writes this on the BBC. Chelsea's new striker, Mark Gu, says it was his, quote, dream to play in the Premier League and denies reports that he left Barcelona for money. Just want to say, Chelsea offered him a lot more money than Barcelona did. <laughs> but do I care if he left for money? I don't care, especially when he cost £5 million. So, of course, the 18-year-old Spaniard has been given a prominent role in Chelsea's pre-season tour after the Blues triggered his £5 million release clause in his contract. Uh, he scored once in four matches, but that doesn't tell the whole tale. I think he's been very good, largely. Uh, while on tour in the United States, he rejected a new contract offer at Barcelona before his move to Stamford Bridge. And it feels good! £5 million on a striker star boy from Barcelona who's made his first team debut, who's scored a winner, who's a bit of a, you know, the, the club love him and the fans love him. I, this is one of my favourite transfers to memory. Um, of course, he might fade away into obscurity, but it's £5 million. It was worth it for the vibes. Um... Yeah, incredible, really. Um, he's denied reports in Spain that it was partly motivated by money, saying this, It was not an issue with my contract. I've always dreamt of playing in the Premier League, and Chelsea is a great club with a lot of history. It's a tough decision, but it's an amazing opportunity, so I had to go for it. Mm. I'm not necessarily buying what he's selling. If he played for any other club than Real Madrid or Barcelona, I'd be like, yeah. But there is there is that thing about those two Galactico, well, Classico clubs that, you know, they are the top of the tree, you know. Premier League is a lot stronger than La Liga. And if regardless, if you want to just test yourself with the highest, you know, level of football, you do come to the Premier League. That is a thing. That is a thing. It's by far the most competitive league in world football. So if that's genuinely your bag, fine. But, you know, there is an allure of playing for Barcelona and Real Madrid and winning all the time. And maybe winning Champions Leagues against Premier League clubs. So there is, there is that. But um, I think he probably did move partially, partially, largely for money. But at the same time, he might just be an ambitious kid and it's an exciting move. So he's asked if he was ready to play in the Premier League or if he would prefer to go out on loan. And he replied this. I'm focused on pre-season tour. I'm doing my best and that's all I can say. But the Chelsea head coach Maresca told me there is an amazing sporting project full of young talent that he wanted me to be a part of. And that he had a lot of faith in me and my skills and my capabilities. Again, it's this thing again. All the young players of the world are being told, come to Chelsea, exciting sporting project. Whether it's Paez, whether it's Esteval, whether it's Gu, whether it's all the other children in between that we've signed. And, like, you know, apparently, on a minor tangent, we look like we've... There's reports, uh, international football reports, that we have agreed to sign Gabriel Mech. I think he's a big Brazilian midfielder, a 16-year-old. Apparently paying 20 million quid for him, or over... Mind blown, we'll put a pin in that and pick up on another video if it's confirmed. But yeah, we keep, we, we still signing children. Um, so yeah, he's, Maresca got a lot of faith in Gu. He, Gu went on to say this, I think I'm ready. We work very hard every day, both on and off the pitch, on the physical aspect and on the practical. So I think I'm ready to be on the pitch and help uh, the team um, when I'm needed. So, my thoughts on this is absolutely keep him in the first team i think he's wicked <laughs> i don't want to get on the hyper you know hyperbolic uh mark you hype train you know we just see something exciting and positive in a in a difficult time turbulent time of chelsea and we all get super excited but he looks wicked i've said it before i love the way he moves i love the way he uses his body uh how he like how he plants his weight to hold up the ball how he can combine he runs in behind he presses all that for me is tick 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 yeah you can be a premier league striker Need to see you tuck some away because you can do all the work and be helpful to the team. But if you're playing centre forward, you need to score some goals. And if he does it, it will be wicked. Ruddy wicked. So, personally, very, very happy with that. Um, and I think he should stay. I think he could be our second choice striker. I know people spoke about Nkunku playing down the middle. Yeah, an option. He did it against uh, Man City. Fine. And he does look good. 
But for me, Nkunku looks better when he drops slightly deeper. When he stops sli slightly deeper, he's got a little bit of the game in front of him. Doesn't have to hold the ball up at all. Uh, can sort of run in between. And Mark Yu looks at like he has absolutely no issue playing as a striker, centre forward, back to goal or running into space. Don't, don't bother him. He can combine in the spaces as well. I'm not saying he should be Chelsea's starting striker. As it stands, for me, that's still Nico Jackson. But very exciting to have him an option to the point where... I think he'd, I don't want him to go. Like, yes, you could talk about development starting every game in La Liga, but Premier League is different to La Liga. And he looks like he can play in the Premier League. So for me, it's a hard yes, hard keep, and I hope we do. Of course, anything can happen. Speaking of anything can happen, the Conor Gallagher saga looks like it's been tucked away to bed and we can all move on. Um, it's with a heavy heart, it looks like Conor Gallagher is leaving. So Romano's has been on this story um, over the last couple of days. Uh, he said uh, he's agreed. He's agreed. Um, Conor Gallagher has verbally agreed and said yes to Atletico Madrid. Here we go. Uh, um, as a follow-up today after formal steps, it's a five-year deal. He gives a little bit more insight on this as well. Two Premier League clubs entered had entered the race to try and sign Gallagher. Uh, considered uh, He considered the two options. Oh, he only ever considered two options. Sign a new two-year deal at Chelsea, so the two plus one, or join Atletico. Interesting that he turned down Aston Villa, that he probably turned down Tottenham. And then I'm assuming these two Premier League clubs are two different Premier League clubs. Maybe one is still Tottenham, but I doubt it. And um, he didn't want to play in any other Premier League club. Uh, he wanted to either extend with Chelsea or he'll go to Atletico Madrid. But he accepted the proposal tonight, which is last night, very late on, or the news was leaked late on. The contract at Atletico Madrid will be valid until June 2029. So it's a five-year contract with Diego Simeone's Atletico Madrid, waiting for formal steps later today, which is, of course, today. Um, yeah, man, Look, I was going over X and uh, Cy Phillips was saying that, you know, stuff, like, I'm just going to read his tweet. I, I don't know. Look, I think... I think he's got good information, Cy Phillips, so I'm not going to say one way or another. And I know clearly he's got a position on Conor Gallagher, but he tweeted this uh, late last night. Chelsea have told Conor Gallagher they are selling him, and if he wants to stay, he has to sign the new deal that they are offering on their terms, basically. If he doesn't, he's pretty much in the Premier League too. Shocking, really. Um... If that's true, you know, we'll, I react to the story that you might even have a Jaden Sancho treatment, like not in the main building... Whether that's just words to try everything they can to get him out the door, or whether that, that was like um, a legitimate thing and just sort of set a precedent with other players, like, look, if you don't play ball, it's a business, you're gonna, you know. It, I, I, look, it's tough, right? It's tough. Because you you can't not have sentiment here. There's, there's like an understanding of a business if you genuinely think you've got to build Chelsea like this, because they do want to win, right? They do want to win. <laughs> Despite everything, there's an Im immense amount of investment uh, in the first team. You can talk about their portfolio players to, uh, you know, generate revenue or whatever. But huge investment into the first team. You know, they have the Premier League record midfielder, Moises Caicedo, who's not bringing in lots of revenue in terms of his, you know, international profile and, you know, his uh, as a brand and his image rights. They spent their money on him because they want to win and be good, a good Premier League team. So they clearly, rightly or wrongly, wherever you align, they've got these ideas saying this is how we become the best Premier League team and we want to win again. Um, but to do that, we've got to buy these types of players, this type of football, uh, and we've got to make this kind of money and Conor Gallagher, we've probably got to sell him. They, they made that decision. They've made that decision. And when you make a decision, you can't bend every corner sentimentally. Otherwise, you'll never get anything done. Um, whether it's Trevor Chalaba, Mason Mount, Conor Gallagher, or even like people like, you know, whether Havertz or Kovacic. And do, do you see what I mean? Or maybe not extending Silva for an extra 12 months, though he would have been in his 40s. So that would have been mental. Although they, they did really love Thiago Silva and that was dealt, you know, with, with grace. So I, I kind of get it, right? And they'll see it like, right, people, news moves fast. They'll get and fans will be pissed off, excuse my language, annoyed. Uh, and then, like, you know, if we start winning, they'll forgive us. And we could believe we're going to start winning. Now, that is devil's advocate. That is being kind and gentle to the project. It's As a football fan, it's very difficult to not have sentimentality to this. Because I was thinking about it last night, right? Um... And I've been, ve I've been very, very consistent on this. I love Gallagher, but I don't necessarily think he's a starter at Chelsea. And if I was Conor Gallagher, 
I would... Uh, He'd definitely a starter at Atletico Madrid, and that's not to denigrate Atletico Madrid. It's a purely stylistic thing. That that's it. Conor Gallagher's an elite footballer. He is. He is. Um, but so I've been firm on that. But if I was him, I was thinking, yeah. Emotion aside, amazing opportunity. Go and play in the Wanda Metropolitano. You know, massive fan base, massive club. You play in the Champions League. You can challenge at the top of La Liga. All that kind of stuff. Like, it's a great opportunity. Uh, I do hope he'd remain in England international. Can do what Kieran Trippier did at Atletico Madrid. You know, go and win a La Liga. Stay in the England team. Um, yeah, great. You know, playing El um, Madrid derbies against Jude Bellingham and all, all that kind of stuff. Like, it's, it's not like we've just farmed them out to Everton like we tried to do a while ago. This is an amazing transfer. It is, bro. It is. It's not like he's having to, like go and like play in the league one somewhere do you know what i mean he, he's going he's an amazing transfer but at the same time he wants to play for chelsea i mean you know not at all costs because he would have signed an extension that was offered but he does want to play for chelsea that would have been his preference to be like on a long-term deal and he has been a model professional he's always been available he's always been available in terms of like fitness and desire to play um, he's played in different positions. His application is is probably the, the player most on planet Earth that can't be questioned in terms of like work rate. And um, yeah, he's just a great kid as well. So, you know, wore the captain's armband, um, loves loves Chelsea. And yeah, they're, they're, it's very, very hard not to sort of have a sentimental view on it, especially with Chelsea where, you know, we've got, I recently said on like social media and on here, I think my favorite time as a Chelsea fan or maybe winning titles and champions leagues and stuff, but going to Stanford bridge when I, when I went a lot last is when Frank Lampard was in charge. I loved it. I absolutely loved it because of the Academy boys, obviously super Frank. And there was just a proper, it was Chelsea. It was just really, really Chelsea in every way, you know? And obviously we're, we're, we're far away from that now with the, with the academy players gone, with like the new ownership, the structure, I've been calling for a structure, so I'm happy with that. And if it was very different, Chelsea will argue, well, look, you know, we've got Levi Colwell in the starting lineup, Reese James, you know, um, a Chin Pong and other players do get their chance and they're around the first team. And if they become elite, 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 then, you know, they will be part of the Chelsea first team. We'll see what happens with that, you know. Um, actually, if it, people, <laughs> people romanticize about the Roman Abramovich times. We never had academy players. We had Ruben Loftus Cheek, and he wasn't a starter. That was it. That was it. So if anything, you know, with Levi Colwell and Rhys James, we're ahead of the uh, Abramovich era times now. Anyway, look, I'm digressing slightly. It's sad when I think of Connor as a guy. I get really sad about it. But then football moves on quickly, and that's 40 million as well. I know it's not as much as we'd wanted, but it's significant. It's pure profit. It's you know, who knows? Maybe we'll go and sign awesome now and everyone will forget about it. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think. Please do leave your comments in the comment section below. Uh, if you're yet to get a VPN, do check out my partner, Surfshark. They are the best VPN, in my opinion. Just click the link in the top of the description uh, or I'll, I'll pin a comment as well. Uh, yeah, man, take care of yourselves. Love you lots. Hopefully see you soon. Peace.